one of the things we explore in great detail in the book is, is how do you make information really sticky, really sticky? And um, what, what there's a kind of high level thought for you is information that's processed in the left brain is, doesn't tend to be very sticky. It doesn't stick. It's not memorable. It doesn't tie to decisions. That's typically fact, data, math, and numbers, which is interesting, of course, because that's often the way we try and get people to make decisions, right? Right. In general, information that's more memorable, that's more sticky, is processed in the right brain. Stories, visuals, metaphors, artifacts, you know, tactile things. If you give me this to touch, the, the kinesthetic centers, I, I, I'm very connected to this at this point. So right. what we try and teach people to do is create the right blend of left and right brain engagement. Now, interesting and really odd fact, within this kind of basket of things you can do to light up the right brain of a human being, be very sticky, mm -hmm. one of the stickiest is the idea of antithesis or two competing thoughts or two contrasting ideas. Um, uh, just give you a couple of examples off the top of your head. If you think about the movie, The Shawshank Redemption, there's a thought in it, get busy living get busy or dying. get busy dying. Now, right. it's interesting, you could finish that thought. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know when you last watched the movie, probably many years ago. Yes, maybe? many years ago. Uh -huh. Now, again, think about this for a second. You watched that movie many years ago. That line only appears twice. It's not like the whole movie, but it's stuck. Ask not what your country can do for you. But what you can what do for you your country, country, right? That's stuck. Why? It's antithetical. Um, now, if you want me to really geek out, let me geek out for one minute and you'll love right. it. Right. Shakespeare, I love. Most people would rather, you know, I won't say something inappropriate. <laughs> it's not the thing do, I, I almost fell asleep as soon as you've said Shake. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, but the thing about Shakespeare's interesting is within this great body of work, there's a certain uh, number of speeches that have survived. I, th I think I'm the only person who's done this. I went back retroactively and I looked at the top 10 most known and memorable speeches from Shakespeare. Guess what they all have in common? They're deeply antithetical. Now, mm -hmm. I won't bore you. Let's just pick three or four at random. To be or not or to not be. be. Mm -hmm. That is the question. Now, that isn't just one. There's four antitheses in that speech. Whether it is wow. noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Hmm. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The hmm. evil that men do lives after them. The good is often buried with their bones. And I could go on and on and on. Um, now is the winter of our discontent. May glorious summer by the son of York. I, I won't bore hmm. you with it, but what's interesting <laughs> is if you go back, what you find is the stickiest ideas in human history tend to be antithetical. Your brain loves wrestling right. with competing thoughts and ideas. Do you know how this has shown up in modern culture? Have you ever bought, or do you know people who've bought exercise equipment or P90X or- uh, Sure, or yeah, sure. Now, why, obviously, late night TV and bottles of red wine have something to do with that. Uh, yeah. One of the reasons is you always see the before and after picture. So uh, here's kind of the overweight, schlubby Tim, and right. here's the super ripped Tim. Ripped Tim. What mm -hmm. are they tapping into? They're tapping into the contrast idea, which is very sticky and very appealing to the brain. So uh, final thoughts on this. Guess where a contrast is evaluated by the brain? Right here. Hmm. Guess where you make decisions? Two synapses away. Wow. You make decisions in almost exactly the same location in the brain where you measure antithesis, which makes sense, right? Because right. any decision is an exercise in contrast. So do I want to buy this car? It's a good car, but it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, it's good fun to drive, but it may not be right for the kids. All decisions are an exercise in contrast. So it makes sense biologically that contrast and decision maker in the same place. Now, let me make this practical so this is more interesting for your viewers. Yeah. How does that help you as a communicator? Because one of the most powerful things you can do in communication, especially if you're trying to persuade somebody to do something, mm -hmm. is contrast the day in the life they have now, which is the, their problem state, and the day in the life that you're offering. 
let me imagine just hypothetically that you had a bad marriage and I am promoting a marriage seminar or a marriage book. What I might say is, you know, Adolfo, imagine that bad day where you get up, you're immediately in a little bit of a niggly argument. It doesn't go well. You don't kiss your wife as you go to work. Now, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm painting what we call Odil, the old day in the life through the lens of a story. And you see yourself in the story. Right. And then I say, but imagine this. Imagine you wake up and the first thing you do when you see your wife is smile and she smiles and you kiss her before you get up and you have a great chat before you go to work and you leave smiling and you text each other during the day and you're looking forward to seeing her at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. What I just did, you see what I just did? I set up an antithetical contrast between life as it is and life as it could be, the problem hmm. you have and the solution, the Odil and Endil, we call old day in the life, new day in the life. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing, I wanna make this very practical, what I'm doing is using the power of antithesis to drive decision making by painting a picture of a different future. This is absolutely foundational to sales messaging. Mm. I was trying to sell you a lighting solution. That case is well developed in the book. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is talk about the problems of lighting when you get it wrong in a hospital, unproductive nurses, people breaking legs in stairwells, maybe some clinical outcomes if a doctor can't see a patient's skin clearly enough versus the similar story with light having been transformed. And so by presenting the old and the new, the brain attaches to its desire for the new in just the same way it does when you buy diet and exercise equipment. So what, what really you're seeing here is that it's not just about neuroscience, it's about how do you apply neuroscience to communications. Absolutely. And I, I'm really glad you picked that up because that's kind of the deep end of the pool. But this idea of antithesis or competing ideas is unbelievably powerful and in, as, like I said you know my favorite guy in history as you know is Winston Churchill mm -hmm. goes up everywhere the most famous quote from Churchill never mm -hmm. in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few mm -hmm. that's a triple antithesis it, it's, <laughs> <Wow. good. laughs> it's great it's not that hard to do we talk about how to do it and if you can leverage this you're creating incredible brain right. stick look at how quickly and easily you remembered those phrases like get busy living or get busy dying from a movie or maybe a decade ago and it's right. only twice in the whole movie